Hi, my name is Aaron. I build cornhole boards for East 10 Cornhole. I get a lot of questions about how I stain my boards and some other questions about how I build them, so I thought I'd make this slideshow to give you a few tips on building your own. For this particular set, the customer wanted them stained, and they wanted the American flag on one board and the Iwo Jima memorial picture on the other one. I built these boards using three quarter inch birch plywood for the tops and one by three select pine for the frame. I use a Craig jig to pre-drill all the holes in the bottom so none of the screws are visible. I also used a router on most of the edges. I measured and marked on the board where my stripes needed to be and I used a straight edge to help keep them straight as I'm laying the tape down. I had a decal shop cut and lay out the vinyl stars that way they all went down as one sheet. For the Iwo Jima boards I first used a straight edge to lay out my border tape then I taped all around the hole. I made this little template using some plexiglass and a wooden disc and that helps me to trace around the hole and get a nice clean circle. You can also use an 8 inch uh, plate or an 8 inch piece of glass to trace around but having the wooden disc in the middle helps hold it steady. The next thing I did was laid out tape where I thought most of my image would cover on the board. As far as the image itself, I usually just get on Google and search until I find a nice outline of what I want to use. Sometimes it helps to search with the word silhouette, and then sometimes you can adjust the contrast on a color image to help give you a good outline. Once I've found the image I want to use, I'll open it in paint and print it out at normal size. But under page setup, you want to make sure it's not set to fit to one page. You want the actual print to scale. Once it's printed out at regular size, I'll take a tape measure and see how wide it is. And say it's 8 inches wide and you want it 16 inches wide. So then you need to change the scale by going to resize and paint and upping it by 200%. Now if you've made your adjustments the right way, it should print out on multiple sheets of paper. What I do is trim the edges and use scotch tape and tape all the pieces together until I have a nice big image. Now you want to lay it out on top of your board. And it's really important to make sure you have your blue tape covering all the areas under the image where you want it to be. So once you have it in place and lined up the way you want it, you want to tape the paper image down on top of the blue tape. Your next step is going to be actually tracing out your image using an X-Acto knife and your objective is to cut through the paper and the tape below it that way you're making a clean line where the outline of the image is going to be. And with this you just want to go slow and take your time while you're getting a feel for it. And I would suggest practicing on some scrap wood first because you mostly only got one shot at it because if you mess up it's real hard to make corrections and you may have cut into the wood also and that knife mark is still going to show through once you stain it. Once you finish cutting everything out you can pull up your paper and throw away all the little scrap pieces of paper and you should be able to see your outline in the tape you can start peeling up the tape within the image where you're going to be staining it. You'll probably run into some spots where your knife may have not cut all the way through your tape, so just go slow as you're peeling it up. You may have to use your knife to cut through and make a few lines a little cleaner. But in the end, you should have a nice image that's ready to be filled in with stain. But you want to make sure you've got all of your tape pressed down well, so use your finger or sometimes the edge of a paint stirrer and press down all the edges of the tape. One of the key ingredients here is using a gel stain. It's a lot thicker than oil stains and less likely to bleed under your tape edges. I also wear nitrile gloves when I'm applying it because the stain is hard to remove from your fingers. And I use cotton rags to apply the stain to the boards. You want to make sure you have your stain stirred up pretty well. It should be about the consistency of pudding. I kind of ball up the rag in my hand and dab it into the stain and wipe some of it off on the edge of the can as I'm bringing it out. And you want to keep it as dry as you can and still be able to spread the stain because the drier the rag is, the less likely it's going to bleed under your tape, but also the slower it's going to be applying. So you kind of got to find a happy medium. Another tip I can give you is 
always try to apply it along the edge of the tape line and not pushing into the tape because if you push into the tape you may push the stain under it so keep it as dry as you can go along the edges of the tape or away from it and not against it I usually go ahead and start pulling the tape as soon as I finish staining it but it doesn't hurt to wait longer if you want to be safe and make sure it's dry if you do pull it off soon after just make sure you don't let the tape fall back over onto the boards in case there's wet stain still on top of the tape it's also helpful to use the edge of your knife to pull up some of the small pieces of tape before you do anything else to the boards you want to let them sit for at least 24 hours to make sure the stains dried and once you know it's dry I use a, a small foam sanding block at medium grit and go really lightly over the whole surface of the boards because typically your tape is going to pull up some of the wood fibers and if you don't sand those down they're going to stand up as soon as you start applying a finish to your boards. Once you're finished sanding the boards wipe them down with a dry microfiber cloth to remove the dust from the surface. The next product that I use on the surface is a sanding sealer that I apply with a small foam roller that's made for cabinets and doors. I usually just apply one coat and after it's dry, I'll use the foam sanding block to smooth the surface again and wipe it down with the dry cloth. Next, I'll apply my first coat of polyurethane. I use a 3 inch bristle brush to apply it. I usually get my brush soaking wet with the polyurethane, where sometimes it's even dripping onto the boards. But when you apply it heavily, it has some self leveling characteristics and can really leave a smooth finish. I generally wait 12 hours between coats. Between coats, I lightly sand the boards and wipe them down with the dry cloth. And it usually takes me about three coats of polyurethane to get the smooth finish I want or I can't feel any of the wood grain through the finish. If these tips helped you out in building your set, send me a picture to east10cornhole at gmail.com. I would like to see how they turned out. Or if the tips were especially useful for you, and you'd like to send a donation, my PayPal address is east10cornhole at gmail.com. Thank you.